everyone, and welcome to We Blame Harry Styles, a podcast dedicated to the work of musician, model, actor, and icon, Harry Styles. This week in episode 13, we are going to do something new and hopefully fun. Draft our Love on Tour set list, which we will explain later in the podcast. My name is Keith. And I'm Gray. And what do we blame Harry for this week? Oh my god. The hours and hours that I've been spending on YouTube looking for old live on tour footage to put in my master post thread of videos of Harry waving flags during live on tour. Nobody asked me to do this. It is a labor of love and I'm doing it and vaguely complaining about it to people, but also I really love it. As he knows, just before we started recording this, I have been digging for this footage of Harry in Japan and like I couldn't find it and then it was because it was like at the cap of the show and like I showed it to Keith. He just he takes the rainbow flag from the audience and he just walks away with it and he just takes it home. Like full wow. unhinged behavior. <laughs> 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 yeah, you've been putting a lot of work in, mm -hmm. and I admire your tenacity. Thank you. What do you blame him for, Key? Yeah, so I blame Harry for my preemptive anxiety at the media industrial complex and the take industrial complex mm -hmm. covering Don't Worry Darling and My Policeman. So, um, as will be revealed throughout this podcast, I listen to a lot of like entertainment news media, like podcasts and like whatever. And I, I like doing that. I like being up on like entertainment news. I like hearing people talk about movies. Like, you know, I, even if I don't see all the movies, like I enjoy, you know, listening to podcasts about it and things like that. And that's all well and good until I realized that pretty soon those people are going to be talking about movies that Harry is in. And I just, you know, it's like that fear, like sometimes you, you like follow somebody on Twitter and then they mention Harry and it's like, oh no, because it's probably going to be positive, but like there's the, there's the chance that they're going to say something you don't like. And, and it's obviously their right to say whatever they want. And I would want media critics and the take industrial complex to be honest, but I, you know, I'm, I'm a sensitive person and I, I, <laughs> I'm just, I want the movies to be good. I want <laughs> Harry to be good in them. And the thought of like media companies and people and podcasts, like who don't normally talk about Harry, like talking about Harry is just a lot for me to process. So mm -hmm. because of the Oscars and, you know, entertainment news this past week, that's something that's been on my mind. Well, we have a, a very interesting time ahead of us. We do indeed. So yeah, speaking of <laughs> movies and um, the movies that Harry is going to be in, we're going to we're gonna do some news this week. I feel like it's been a while since, not that we do that many podcasts, like it's not <laughs> like we podcast every week anyway, but I feel like it's been a little while since we've actually covered Harry-related news, so we're going to start out by doing yeah. that, and then we're going to get into the set list draft. So this is something that I'm really excited about. It's kind of a new thing for us. It's a new idea. Hopefully, if it works and you guys think it's fun, uh, we'll, we, we'll do it again with like other Harry-related things like maybe drafting his outfits or something like that but um yeah i'll explain it later in the show but um yeah hopefully that's something that you guys enjoy don't worry if you don't understand like football or sports or anything <laughs> we got you i don't either do. and neither do i somehow i was like you know yeah raised in a house of jocks so i'm like very familiar with like fantasy sports like terminology not that like a draft is like so specific to that but yeah we'll we'll explain it all later but yes. um yeah we're gonna go through and make our set list and it's gonna be competitive it's gonna be maybe hopefully kind of cutthroat so <laughs> hopefully that's a good time it'll be an unsafe space for us but a very safe <laughs> space for you as people who we assume most of you do not watch sports so we got you don't worry about this now let's get yes, into the gay news. Um, do you want to start off with film news? Yeah, so we're going to start out with My Policeman. So My Policeman is currently filming in the United Kingdom. So Yay. Yeah, so Harry, you know, as we said in our Lights Up episode, which, by the way, thank you guys so much for all the love and conversation around that. Um, I got a ton of great feedback. It seems like you guys really enjoyed the episode. So as that was yeah. something that was really special to me and that we prepped for a lot, um, it was really nice to hear that feedback. 
So, you know, as we said in that episode, Harry has not exactly been up to a lot. It's not exactly like mm-hmm. this time last year. Um, and <laughs> part of the reason why that is is because he's filming a movie. So that's something that we haven't been seeing much of. Like, we there's, ne- there's not been any set photos of Harry, but there has been some set photos of other people like David Dawson and a few other people that are in the movie. Mm-hmm. So we just figured we'd mention that, that that's on the, our radar as something to look out for, that that's kind of what Harry's up to at the moment. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm very excited for that. For this next one, so as we all presumably know, um, Harry Styles was on SNL a year and a half ago, and he did a bunch of, like, really fun, just, like, goofy photos and stuff, and so, what was it, like, last week or a couple weeks ago? Something like that. (laughs) Yeah, something like that. Time is a flat circle now. These photographs started leaking onto Twitter of Harry in a mermaid costume. So the first one that leaked was him wearing, you know, an aerial wig and the tail and, you know, bra that's the shells and waving champagne in the air. And so I link it to Key and Key started mansplaining to me that it couldn't possibly be real. Oh no, you're going to bring this up. (laughs) I didn't think that when I prepped the news for this week that this this is where this conversation would go <laughs> and so I, I i said no this is real and he was like no it's photoshopped i know even what photo set this uh face comes from it really looked like his face from the photo shoot that he did with the face <laughs> it does like look like the that era. it really looks like that it looks like that because he is the same person it's true but also <laughs> what i also will say is that Part of the reason why I think it was so easy for me to believe that this first photo is photoshopped is that it has that thing that, like, a lot of the Mm -hmm. SNL photos have where it's just, like, more edited than it needs to be. Right. Like, this is a weird thing that SNL does. They've done it for both of his photo shoots. There's this Mm -hmm. one particular photo from, I remember, from this past SNL photo shoot and then one from his last time at SNL where they just, like, take his under eye area and, like, majorly... Alter it. it yeah so then he just like looks like an alien like i don't know why they do that i i it's like the really good photos i love the snl kind of chaos photo shoot aesthetic but it's just a strange editing choice yeah. so i think there's a little bit of that element as well too where this photo is just like it's edited enough that i looked at it and was like oh that could be mm-hmm. that could be an edit but mm-hmm. i was wrong and i will take that l yeah so they started uh there were like three other ones and it was very very fun if you guys haven't seen them Go check them out. Uh, I'm sure that you have seen them though, and seen them everywhere. <laughs> if you listen, if you're into Harry Styles enough to listen to a Harry Styles podcast, you see oh, yeah. these photos. We love I'm them. I'm sure you have. I love the I love the trash mermaid aesthetic of it. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, and then I love to the connection with the "But Daddy, I Love Him" shirt, which is a quote from mm-hmm. The Little Mermaid. So now I'm like, is Harry like a big fan of the movie The Little Mermaid, like the Disney original? Is this like, um sly kind of cheeky reference to the casting rumors about him playing prince eric and then he's like oh i'll pop up in this aerial costume Mm -hmm. like is that what's going on like i don't know all those ideas i found very cute i feel like the end joke has to be that i was i wasn't in the little mermaid because i wanted to play ariel instead and i agree (laughs) i think he would have been great at being ariel and uh Hans Christian Andersen, if he had been born today, he would have written it as a, as a gay story. So Harry's not wrong. Love it. Whatever. So, Love the um, photos. Yeah. Yeah, so next we have the Gucci Beloved campaign, which was photographed by Harmony Corinne. I hope I'm saying that name correctly. And yeah, so this was something that we got on April 23rd. It's a promotional campaign for a couple of Gucci bags. Uh, so yeah, so we got a video of this, which it's a part of this campaign, which is Harry on a talk show with James Corden kind of being interviewed and the central concept is like, you know, it's kind of like this performative talk show uh, scene where they're laughing and, you know, and saying they're friends or whatever, and then they go backstage. And it's kind of awkward. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I have a little quote from Alessandro Michelle here as the creative director of Gucci, said, we decided to show the concept of Beloved in an ironic way, with handbag investments uh, serve as milestones in most people's lives. Um, Michelle, this is the quote from the interview, intended to give Gucci's best-selling products the same star treatment received by those celebrities who typically carry them. He said, there were two stars, the bag and the actual talent, a game of cross-references between the two great protagonists. 
so that I thought was kind of like an interesting description. That's not so much what I got from it. Mm-hmm. Um, I got more of, you know, that dissonance between, you know, the talk show environment, what celebrities, you know, act like when they're performing in front of a crowd and then the backstage of it all and kind of like how fake it is, which is just like an interesting idea to sell a purse. Like, it I, really is. It was, that was kind of strange. I think it fits well. I was looking up before we recorded about Harmony Corinne and like the different things that that director has done and that kind of fits well in with that to me and i think it's well shot like the video itself i like i like the kind of like 70s talk show aesthetic of it it fits well with the wardrobe but yeah it's it's kind of an interesting offbeat concept for an ad for this line but yeah thought it was interesting what about you alessandro shell seems to give the people that he kind of hires on to do stuff a lot of artistic freedom to just do whatever he'll be like oh gaston san you make a lot of good movies just do whatever and put these clothes on people and then you have a thing is that cool here you go (laughs) i feel like i got that vibe too from this campaign yeah i don't know i i uh i found the the video to be interesting but quite uncomfortable like i I couldn't watch it a second time uh, but then my entire timeline started trending his smile and I was like, it, yeah, it was creepy. And, but everybody's like, oh my God, he's like so cute. And I'm like, so this is going to be the don't worry, darling Twitter. <laughs> 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 Where every, everybody's going to at, at Harry dash styles, kill me bestie, you know? Oh God. So. <laughs> I can see it now. Yeah, I, I I think you know it. Obviously, yeah, it's a little uncomfortable. It's mm-hmm. it's meant to be. I thought. Oh yeah. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was interesting too because like it's weird because James Corden and Harry are actually friends. Mm-hmm. So there's this weird dynamic where like they're pre- in the video itself, them as like the character versions of them are pretending to be friends in front of an audience and then they go backstage and it's revealed that they're not friends. But then the real Harry and James Corden are friends. And like that's not my me buying into like some parasocial thing because I've saw no, they, Harry they are. In an interview I've, I've by James Corden like they're out. out. Yeah, yeah, they're, they like go on vacation together. They're like friends, you know. So that that was interesting, and it's not an element that was there. I I will out myself as like I didn't watch the other promotional videos for this campaign. I'm not like I'm interested in this because Harry was in it, and because I was like, oh, let's see how he looks, whatever. I'm not like invested in Gucci as a brand really at all. Um, no, me neither. Invested in Gucci purses, so I wasn't here to like watch the other ads, but um. Yeah, so that I thought was an interesting element of it. I love the jeans that he's in. I kind of dug. Everybody was was you know talking about how Harry you know looks like the 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 mom who kills the husband in the movie and then comes out in that you know big fluffy expensive coat or dress or whatever it is yeah. like. What are you talking about? My husband died. <laughs> it's like how, how is it that I described it on the sh- the shit post blog that I have? <laughs> what was it like? Well, I, I have a side shitpost Twitter that uh, got an unexpected number of likes on Harry Styles will play the guitar on HS3. Yeah, plug it. What's the what's the handle? Uh, it's at HS3 updates. Um, <laughs> yeah, we love it. We love the hyper specific <laughs> update accounts that keep cropping up. And by love, I mean I'm very I'm exasperated them. by them. Um, so. That's kind of what led to the to the shit post update account. Yeah, I started making a shit post update account because I just um, I couldn't handle it anymore, and so yeah, my, one of my descriptions was a uh, new Harmony Corinne takes a picture of Harry looking like he won the mansion in a celebrity divorce settlement that rocked the nation. That's exactly what it is. That's mu- a much better way to put it than what mm-hmm. I said. Yeah. yeah, and I don't, like, generally, this is an aesthetic of, like, fashion that I don't love. Like, I don't love fur, really, but, yeah, I dig the jeans. I I think it works totally with the aesthetic that they're going for. Like, the, the, the interview, he's he's supposed to be a celebrity on the show, so mm-hmm. he's not, like, wearing this, you know, as Harry Styles or whatever. It's, like, this is very much the celebrity, the performance. So, in, mm-hmm. that, in that way, I think it worked really well. I enjoyed that aspect of it. So, yeah, so kind of, like... I thought briefly when Harry Styles Daily, which is like the biggest Harry update account, obviously tweeted out um, the photos from this campaign. They were kind of asking like, which which of the Gucci campaigns that Harry's done so far do you like the best? So I thought that that could just briefly, we could segue into that discussion. Um, So my favorite by far is the one with the animals. Mm -hmm. Um, 
where he has well i guess there's one with the chicken so not that one but the one with the baby lamb and the pig like yeah, that one good. is like my favorite of the gucci campaigns what about you oh god um it's hard but i would say the one in the middle here with the pink suit yeah so that's with the with the yeah with the, um, he's like you know he, he's doing all this swan like, yeah the, the swan and like he he looks like he's in the room of requirement and shit that stuff's great <laughs> yes yeah i like that um, one a lot too uh, but i do care for the baby animals and sometimes i do look at those photos and imagine myself as one of the baby animals <laughs> I just love my favorite's the one where he's carrying a lamb across his shoulders because it's just like very Jesus and it's mm -hmm. just like I just enjoy that imagery a lot. I just feel like if he was carrying me and I was an animal, I would be extremely <laughs> safe in his arms. <laughs> like if I were that chicken in the one Gucci campaign, I would just be oh my god, I would just be so snug right in there. Yeah. That definitely checks out. Yeah. And I'm normal for having this fantasy, so... <laughs> <laughs> if only I was the chicken in Harry Styles' arms in the Gucci campaign. And oh, that is a God. very normal thought that we all have had, I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Leave me alone. Um, okay. So, finally, we're going to talk about Chloe Zhao. Uh, Two-time Academy Award-winning director Chloe Zhao of Nomadland and Eternals fame. Her stylist said, I did a photo shoot with her for Tatler Asia. She's amazing. Her favorite two things in her closet was a Harry Styles t-shirt and a Harry Potter t-shirt. And she said, can I please just wear these? So Harry's an Eternals, right? <laughs> I think so. I think so. And if he's not, he will definitely appear in another Chloe Zhao project in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so, uh, you know watch the oscars the oscars happened fairly recently before we recorded this podcast very happy for chloe Zhao. i really enjoyed nomadland the movie would recommend um and i just love when harry's are successful mm -hmm. so <laughs> and she is a confirmed harry after this we were kind of wondering like or at least i was like she'd been pictured we've talked about it in the podcast before you know she she's been pictured in a treat people with kindness shirt mm -hmm. before and so i think the running thought was that maybe you know, Harry has some cameo in Eternals because there are, like, if you missed the last time we talked about this on the podcast, there's, like, some other contributing evidence that have led this to be a rumor that exists out there. And so people thought because she was wearing his merch that maybe he went to the set to film the cameo and gave mm -hmm. her his merch because he does that a lot. Um, and now I just think that, yes, maybe it was that, but also she's just, like, a fan of his work, which I think is even cooler. Yeah, so definitely if he's not in Eternals... I, f I feel like they'll find a way to work together at some point in the future, oh, yeah. but I just thought this was a very cute quote from her. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to our main segment, Harry Styles' Love on Tour set list draft. Yes. So, I'm really excited for this, and I hope that you guys enjoy it, and I hope that it's fun for us to do as well. So I'm going to start off by kind of like explaining the idea of what this even is in the first place. And yeah, so basically we're going to draft Harry's songs we have a bunch of different categories for this into a set list and we're each going to end up with two different set lists so this idea came from somebody called evan valence who submitted this as an idea for the podcast the big picture which is a podcast on the ringer podcast network that i listen to and would highly recommend and on that podcast on the ringer they do different movie drafts so like let's say they take the year 2010 and they will draft the movies of that year meaning like it's like a sport fantasy sports style draft there's different categories like comedy horror drama animation etc and they'll go through and they'll like draft the movies of the year and they'll see like okay who has the best like slate of movies that they drafted from that year so that's kind of where i got this idea so credit to them the ringer podcast network and credit to evan valence for sending this idea to them um i'm sure that none of those people will ever have any idea that a harry styles podcast put that into practice but um if they ever do find out thank you for your idea thank you bestie and, uh, yeah. So what the basic idea is, is we're going to go back and forth and pick different Harry songs in different categories to compete to end up with the best set list that we can. Mm -hmm. So this is, like I said before, based on things like fantasy sports drafts, etc. So a key component also for you to understand is that once one of us chooses a song, that song's not going to be available for the other to choose, right? So there's no like songs that we're going to double up on. 
um, there's a cap on how many songs we will end up with from each category. So like how it would work in a fantasy sports draft, you might have three running backs. And yes, I did Google how many running backs you might have on a fantasy sports team because I, I would not know that information going into this. <laughs> Um, and in our draft, you're going to have, for example, one of the categories is non One Direction covers. So like songs that Harry has covered that are not One Direction songs. So you might have three of those in that category. So by the end of the draft, we should each have three non One D covers of Harry's in our set list. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So does that make sense? And then I'll kind of break down the categories. Yeah. And then after uh, we choose our songs, um, we're going to order them in the best order possible. And then we're going to debate... Whose is better? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so the categories that we'll be doing are One Direction covers, of which we will have two each. So by the end of the draft, we'll each end up with two One Direction covers on our set list. Non-One Direction covers, like I said before, we're going to have three each of those, and one of those can be a wild card. So like any song ever to exist, basically. So two are going to be ones he's covered before, one can be any song, a wild mm -hmm. card. The next category is songs off of HS1. So we're going to draft almost all of those. So there's going to be, we're going to end up with four songs each from that album. So that should leave two songs from that album that don't end up getting drafted. The next category is songs off of Fine Line. Again, we're going to draft almost the whole album. We're going to end up with five songs each off of Fine Line. So that's, that should leave two on the table. Um, and finally, our last category is going to be unreleased songs. So then we're going to do three of those each. So that includes Anna and Medicine, um, the unreleased songs from his last tour. And the exciting part is that it's going to include any songs that we know about that haven't been released. So that could be like Baby Honey, which is from his last era. It could be Isabella, which is from this current Fine Line era of unreleased songs. Um, so this kind of imagines that Harry is going to play them for the first time on Harry Styles Love on Tour like he did the last time. This is going to end up with both of us having a set list of 17 songs. That should be how the math works mm -hmm. out. So if you're listening to this episode, maybe you want to play along, pick the 17 songs at, in these categories that you would want the most. Um, but if you're listening for us, we're going to kind of keep an eye on the math, keep an eye on how many songs from each category we've picked so that we end up with that amount of songs from each category and 17 songs overall in our set list. Um, so other important information for you to know is that we aren't going to pick in category order. So I could choose for my first pick, like let's say, so we're going to flip a coin to determine which of us picks first. So let's say I end up winning that and I pick first. My first pick could be in the One Direction Covers category. And then Gray, Gray in response to that, could pick from the HS1 songs category. And we're just kind of go like that and we'll keep an eye on how many songs we've picked from each category and then just kind of go from there. Like Gray already said, then we're going to order our songs, kind of present our set list to you all, and then I would thought we would have you all decide which one is better by voting in a Twitter poll on who has the best set list. So we're going to wait a couple days after this podcast is released to post that Twitter poll just because, you know, that way people aren't listening to this podcast already knowing all the songs that we're going to pick. That would make it a little bit less fun. But, you know, a couple days after this is released, you should be able to go to our Twitter and vote on whose is better. Um, yeah, so that's the general idea. I hope that all made sense. And yeah, I'm really excited to get into it. Just a warning, preemptively, I am a fairly competitive person, so I'm going into this with that knowledge. Gray, how are you feeling going into this? I'm going to destroy you. Wow, strong words that are hopefully will not be the case because I'm bringing a passion. I'm bringing <laughs> specific love for specific songs <laughs> that I claim as mine that I will be angry if okay. you take from me. That's the energy that I'm bringing into today's draft. Like I said, okay. let us know if you do find this fun and maybe we'll institute it for some other categories. But yeah, let's get to our Harry Styles Love on Tour set list draft. So we're going to flip this coin to see who goes first. So I'm going to have you call it. Do you want heads or tails? How well, you, have to, you have to do it on your phone, though, and show me to make sure that I know that you're being truthful. I can send you a photo of it on my computer if you want to see it. But Okay, I'll, I'll trust you, bestie. <laughs> okay, great. I'm going to let you call it. And do you want heads or tails? Heads. Okay, so that makes me tails. I'm going to press this little flip again thing on Google slash coin flip or whatever I'm on. And... Here we go. Three, two, one, flip. Oh, and it's heads. It's heads, so I get to go first. You have the first pick in our first ever Harry Styles set list draft. Okay, 
I, my first pick is Canyon Moon. <laughs> no, it's not. It is. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it is. Your first pick is... Listeners, <laughs> I, if you don't come to this episode with the knowledge of our previous episodes, please know that Canyon Moon is like the one Harry song that I claim. It's what my Twitter at is from. <sighs> I, I told you, I told you, I, I, I said, I'm going to destroy you. So Yeah, you okay. really came out swinging there I so did. wow that's that hurts i'm just i just feel i just feel like you pull you, you really went low for your first pick <laughs> i just felt like i needed to set the tone off strong because you were <sighs> telling me before this you were like i'm very competitive i'm very competitive and i'm oh, like no. well if he's bringing this energy then i need to just <laughs> like i need to make you know my masculinity that's so viral no <laughs> known right away yeah. um so what's your pick? All right, my first pick, I'm going strong, coming out the gate, I'm picking Sign of the Times. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> fuck me! You picked, like, my only Harry song that I claim as your, as my, your first pick. And Sign of the Times is, like, an obvious pick. Like, obviously that should be in your in your set list. So fuck you. I gotta go with Sign of the Times. Oh my god, okay. Ironically, I think you do like the song more than me. It's like... So we really flip flopped here on our on our first picks. We really established a tone. Now I have to figure out. Oh my God, there's no replacement for "Sign of the Times" on the on the HS one. Ah, fuck, fuck Listen, you. That was the clear <laughs> first pick. Okay. Everybody needs "Sign of the Times" on their set list. It's Harry's signature song. Oh, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> we're really winning our explicit just over the stupidest <laughs> shit. Okay, all right. Uh, well, okay, so. I just have to cross that off. Okay. Uh, so, so you can't have it. I'm gonna take Kiwi now. So we've split up yeah. side of the times and Kiwi. I hope that you're happy. That's a smart pick. That's a smart pick. That was on my list too. So there is like so. There's an element of strategy to this. Obviously, you want to keep in mind what you think the other person's gonna pick. Mm -hmm. Save the picks that are just yours that the other person doesn't want for last. Things like that. So we're keeping it all in our heads. All right, I'm kind of vamping so I can figure out what I want to do next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you've got Canyon Moon and Kiwi. Yeah. Strong, strong. All right, because you picked Kiwi, which is the staple of the Encore, I'm going to have to pick the other staple of the Encore and go with, in the One Direction Covers category, What Makes You Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I anticipated that, that, that you would take that. Yep. So we've got rid of that staple. I have Kiwi. Okay, so... Uh, I'm gonna pick TPWK because definitely need okay. flag waving. All right, that was on my short list of things that I wanted, but I did anticipate that you would pick that. Mm -hmm. And unlike you, I didn't come into this draft and pick the one song that you claimed as yours as my first pick. So <laughs> that was not my first move. Um, okay, let's see. So you have treat people with kindness. I'm gonna go with Fine Line as my next pick. That's fair. I actually, I didn't have that on mine because I anticipated that you would take it. Yeah, one of my, uh, probably my favorite Harry song. I think the best Harry song and the ultimate closer before the encore. Mm -hmm. Nothing better than that. So that's my rationale for that pick. Okay. For unrelease, I feel like since What Makes You Beautiful is not an encore, I feel like a strong encore would be medicine. So I'm going to throw it. medicine in the encore. Ugh, I wanted that one too. Well, it's mine now. All right, speak on it. Oh, I just feel like it would be really good, like, I don't know. It, it seems to have really good, like, amped energy, and everybody, I feel like also everybody would be, like, chanting during the set, like, out, sing medicine, and then obviously he comes back out, he's like, who wants to hear more? And then, I'll, you know, he jams into it, and everybody's like, oh my god, you know? It's true. This is, like, kind of brutal, because you have a lot of the gay songs, which I feel not good about, and I feel like I need to gay up my... <laughs> list yeah stop um, stop having stop having the hetero set list the head yeah set, like if you will. the hetero set list of what makes you beautiful and sign of the times and fine line the real the realist <laughs> the heterosexual list of songs hmm so That's the problem with list. bisexuality oh, always <laughs> the half straight with us uh to be clear listeners we are kidding and we are both bisexual <laughs> ourselves um i think in the spirit of the gay i'm gonna have to draft lights up as my next pick okay yeah i also anticipated that cool 
All right, so just so you don't feel so bad, I'm going to start drafting some heterosexuality. Um, <laughs> so I would like for one of my 1D covers, I would like to draft Olivia. Yep, okay. I saw that out. coming a yeah. mile away, and I'm glad you got that song, and I would love to go to that concert of yours and hear oh, him God. do that song. All right, Um. then I think for my next pick, I'm going to do Adore You. Ah, oh, fuck off. Okay. <laughs> You gotta get, I feel like a lot of my, I, I've got some slow songs in there. I've got two iconic Harry Styles ballads. So I feel like I gotta get in like a good pop song that's gonna keep the energy up. One, Adore You, one of the best Harry songs. Yeah, true. Um, okay, then if you're taking Adore You, I think I'll take, oh, fuck. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> oh, this is a tough decision. Okay, I think that I'm just gonna take Watermelon Sugar so you can't have it. That's fine with me. I'm yeah. fine with that. I feel like okay. Watermelon Sugar and Adore You should be split up because those mm -hmm. two songs in one set list together, like, that would stack one of our set lists too much with, like, too much of the good pop mm -hmm. bangers that Harry has. So I feel like it almost makes sense that those two are broken up. I just have a horny set list. Okay, so <laughs> what's your next pick? For my next pick... We're really going for the fine line songs here. I'm mm -hmm. going to go with Golden for my next okay. pick. You need an opener. I feel like that's a really good opener. It is, yeah. That's the way I'm going to go with this. Golden's a great song. Love that music video. We're really cranking through these fine line ones because fine line is superior. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to be going with. Okay. Yeah, I guess, I guess we'll just run down fine line. So I'm going to pick Sunflower Okay. as one of mine. I just feel like, I, I don't know. I feel like on the real love on tour, he's probably not going to sing it, but I just really like it. It's just nice. Oh, it's great. And I can't believe, I'm so hurt that you took Canyon Moon for me. I feel like the, they're kind of of a piece, and so those two together are going to be really good, and that hurts me, because I love mm -hmm. them both. But yeah, so we each have picked four songs so far from Fine Line. So that leaves one song left for each of us. So I'm going to take a little trip away from that category, and I am going to draft... Let me see what do i want here all the all the ones that i set out is my top picks i've already picked so that element of my strategy <laughs> is kind of done so we're kind of hopping around here so i think i'm gonna pick the chain okay for the first of my non-1d covers category okay i would like to pick for my non-1d covers girl crush <sighs> you're really beating me out with these gay songs i know yeah i went in trying to decide if i wanted that one or mm -hmm. the chain and the chain is a strong choice i you know been seeing a lot of covers of the chain and the chain fucks like yeah it's really good it's like yeah. it, you can tell harry's like really passionate about it when he sings it it's gonna bring mm -hmm. the energy it's gonna bring that vibe and it's not not a gay song <laughs> but i i don't know if i know like i know the chain but i i don't know if i I don't know if I had a queer interpretation of it. So I mean, it do, it's doesn't funny. like specify the gender of the person in the song. So like, it's not, it's neither a gay nor a straight song. It's just about people. Wow, that truly is the most Harry Styles of it all. Then, <laughs> um, <laughs> like we said okay. on our lights episode, episode, can't we all just vibe? Can um, we just vibe. All right, so. Yes, so that leaves us with so let's do a little let's do a little catch up on where we are with the categories because we're probably okay. maybe halfway through it right now or a little bit farther. So so far I have what makes you beautiful, the chain, sign of the times, golden, adore you, lights up, and fine line. Mm -hmm. So that leaves me with one one D cover left, two non one D covers, three HS one songs one fine line song and all three of my unreleased songs left so catch okay. me up on where you're at and i have olivia girl crush kiwi watermelon sugar tweet people with kindness sunflower canyon moon and medicine so i have one 1d cover two non-1d covers three hs1 songs one fine line song and two unreleased songs left all right sounds good okay yeah so it's my pick Let's see. I'm going to take off of HS1 ever since New York. Oh, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> All right. We haven't done, it's funny, we haven't talked about HS1 once, and, and we haven't talked about HS1 really yet in, in an in-depth way on this podcast, and that will be coming soon um, as a little 
preview of some things we might be talking about in this podcast in the future. But mm-hmm. Ever Since New York is one of my favorite Harry songs. Um, it's definitely one of my top songs off of HS1. So that is okay. my next pick. Uh, from HS1, all right, I'll pick Woman. Because I actually, I actually think that song fucks. Okay. Okay, strong pick. Love that concert moment where he picks up the rubber chicken and makes the quacking noise along with the song. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it wasn't on my initial list, but it's it's been on my mind a lot lately. And I mean, I have made out with somebody to the song. It was hot. So <laughs> wow. Yeah. Bringing that personal experience into bringing the, draft, the personal experience. Bringing that emotionality. Will that come back to haunt you? We'll have to see. I don't know. I mean, I, I just. <laughs> You know, some I I I'm an adult. Sometimes I also fuck. So, um, okay. So is it your turn? It is next? my pick, indeed. Um, okay. So I'm gonna take from HS One Two Ghosts. Okay. Now I don't know if this is a controversial pick. I feel like the fandom is kind of divided on Two Ghosts. I really like Two Ghosts, mm-hmm. especially live, and I would like to hear it on my set list. I love that. Uh, On HS1, I'll take From the Dining Table. Okay. Anything you'd like to say about it as a pick? No, I just like that song. It is a good song. Yeah. Let's see where I'm at here. I think, trying to decide, there's like, with the unreleased songs, it's like, do you pick multiple of the really unreleased, like the ones we haven't Mm. heard at all? It's like kind of risky. Um, I do really like Anna as a song. Um, Mm. Do I go with my head or my heart? Do I go with what I think the listeners would prefer or my ideal set list? No, do your ideal set list. I think I'm going to go with To Be So Lonely. Okay. For my last pick off of Fine Line. All right, and then I'll pick, let's see, what's not taken? Can you tell me what's not taken, I'm John? Yeah, so the Fine Line songs not taken are Cherry, Falling, and She. Oh, She's not taken. I almost forgot about She because we were recording late. Okay, yeah, that one's mine. Yeah, I kind of thought that you were going to claim that. Those that was the one those were the ones I was trying to decide between. I really like She as a song, but I just love to be so lonely. I love the Mitch of it all. Although the Mitch of it all for both those songs, but To be so lonely is great. It's actually on my initial list. I I I kind of forgot she existed for a second. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's it's How could listeners, you truly? Listeners, it's late and sometimes my brain is gone. Okay. Okay, so Fine Line as a category is it's locked. Gone. We both picked our five songs for Fine Line. The two uh, that are left on the table are Cherry and Falling. Sorry, those two you're not going to hear in concert if you go to either of these shows. I feel like that makes sense. I think so. This is actually, this makes sense of like what we've grabbed. Yeah. Yeah, Cherry, I love, 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 love as a song, but I feel like live at a concert, it's not totally the vibe. Like, it's a great song to just like put your headphones on and like listen to in the dark mm-hmm. but i'm not sure if it's like the live concert vibe and falling i just like don't love as a song so that's why it's left off my list i do feel like it would be good live i feel like it'd be a good live ballad but i feel like i already have enough kind of slower ballad type songs on my slow list so all right so uh, is it is it your turn yep it's my pick so i have one song left off of each as one I think in the non-1D covers category, I'm going to take Sledgehammer. Okay. I love that cover. Love I love all the old people that were converted into Harry fans from seeing that cover. I feel like every couple weeks, like, some verified person on Twitter mm-hmm. that's, like, over the age of 60, like, tweets out that they were converted to nice be a Harry Styles man. fan because of that cover. So yeah. we're, we're, repping, we're repping the older demographic with mm-hmm. this pick. For 1D covers, I'm going to pick Night Changes. Okay. My explanation for that is I really want Harry to sing Night Changes. I'm obsessed (laughs) with him singing A deep logic behind that choice. Okay. Listen, I, I, you know, you and I have had many a conversation where I'm like, oh my God, like, I just, I just want him to sing Night Changes and he's not going to, but in my imagination, he is. Yeah, that's fair. And I feel like it would be a nice, like... Like, if he's saying Night Changes, it's, like, kind of poetic, mm. like, you know, it's, it's like, a song about change, it's a song from One Direction that he'd be singing as a solo artist. I feel like it could mm-hmm. be a nice concert moment. Mm-hmm. I Although, would I don't know why I'm making your argument for you here. I should be saying, that's a terrible pick, that's yeah, awful. Who, would, terrible. who in their right mind would want to choose Night Changes and listen to that at a live show? Nobody would ever want to listen to it. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, okay, so where am I at? Yeah, I think for my last HS1 pick... I'm gonna go with now I'm trying to like 
play the songs in my head. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to have to go with Carolina. Okay. Which I feel like isn't a popular pick. Like, I feel like most people would pick only Angel. And I apologize to our listeners, I guess, if you feel weird things about that. I feel like when Carolina was on his set for that one show that he was supposed to do that didn't end up happening, people were like, why is Carolina there? And I get that. They're like, I have some issues, too, with Carolina that we will get to when we discuss HS1 on this podcast eventually. But I love the music behind that song. I just think the backing track of that song is great. I love, like, I love listening to that aspect of it. So um, I'm going to have to draft Carolina into my set list. I've been running into meet the live version of Meet Me in the Hallway a lot recently, and it's so pretty. So that was actually on my list for HS1. All right, so you're going to meet me in the hallway? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that closes out HS1 as a category for us. We each have four songs. I have Sign of the Times, Carolina, Two Ghosts, Ever Since New York. You have Meet Me in the Hallway, Kiwi, Woman, and From the Dining Table. Mm-hmm. So you have the closing, the opener. That's kind of interesting. And yeah, so the two songs we're leaving on the table are Only Angel, which I feel like we might get some flack for, <laughs> um, and Sweet Creature. Which I actually really like Only Angel, but I think partly, like, it's it's part of his flag-waving set so often that I think I'm, like, a little sick of it right now. Because <laughs> I've, <been laughs> I've been listening to excerpts from Only Angel for five days straight. So <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of regretting not picking it. I kind of feel like I should have picked that over Carolina, but it's done now. No, done Carolina's, done. Carolina's great. I mean, oh no, ooh, Carolina's bad. It's a bad, <laughs> bad set. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta manufacture this controversy. <laughs> All right, so you picked, you just picked me in the hallway, right? So yeah. that means that my pick is up, and we're we're getting down to the wire here. And I think I'm gonna go with, yeah, why not? I'll pick Anna. Okay. In unreleased songs, I really really like Anna. Mm-hmm. Um, just and Anna musically, is gay. it has a it has a George Michael sample in it. Oh yeah, it has that George Michael sample in it, which I love. Um, yeah, I guess this is our time to talk about these songs because I don't think we have on this podcast before. I, Medicine and Anna, I both think are great songs. I think mm-hmm. I, I, I prefer them to some of the songs on HS1. Um, and so, yeah, I wish kind of that they had made the cut of the album. I understand why they didn't, but I love Anna. I love the sample on that song. There's this like video clip that gets passed around a lot with Anna where Harry's like strumming the guitar on like, uh. the da 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 um, which I just love and is a great clip and is very He's fun so in cute. concert. So oh, fuck him. I'm kind of crushed that I didn't get medicine, but I will take Anna and be happy about Anna's that. Anna's good. I, I, I like, I think that Anna might be a structurally better song than medicine, but I, I like both for different reasons. Mm, yeah. I think I do like the so- the sound of Anna more and obviously yeah. like medicine but medicine's is like energy is special just so and good. important. Yeah. But, um, yeah. All right. Your, your pick is up. So, can I be chaotic and share my wild card? Sure. So, for my non-1D covers, um, I'm going to select <laughs> What's New Pussycat by Tom Jones as one of my <laughs> covers. Here's my thing. My friend said this to me once because we were talking about things that Harry Styles should cover. And, like, I have a lot of, like, very serious things. Like, I, I, I would really like him to cover, like, some Beach Boys songs, especially sometime. I just think that would be so fun. But my friend oh, was like, a great idea. he should cover What's New Pussycat by Tom Jones. And there's just, uh, like, I just pictured Harry with this enormous, like, shit eating grin going, Pussycat, Pussycat, I love you. And I, I hate him so much for it, but I also love him so much for it. Um, and I just feel like it would be, it would be the perfect... Oh, I just want to kill you, but I love you so much. So yeah. So what's new, Pussycat? That curse is on my set. Um, wow, love that for you. Yeah. And that's a very you pick. That's a very. <laughs> I guess our our personalities might come out with these wild cards. And yeah, that that pick checks out to me. What's your wild card? Do you want to pick it? I do not because I think strategy wise, it just makes sense to leave that for last because there's no way you could take uh. that from me. <laughs> Although most of the ones we're kind of down to a point here where our taste, like all the ones we, our taste is in common, we've kind of picked already. So we're yeah. kind of, our tastes are diverged at this point in the draft. I was really hoping I'd get Canyon Moon, so I'm still very crushed that I didn't get it. And I, I, really, it, but... I really hurt you with that one. <laughs> you really did. Um, So I think, 
I'm going to take, well, yeah, see, there's not really, I guess we're kind of to a point where there's not really strategy here, so, mm -hmm. well, I guess there's one, and this, maybe this was, like, never in your head as something to pick, so maybe I'm just, like, psyching myself out, but I'm going to protect this one, because this is one that I really want, which is an unreleased song that we've never heard before, mm -hmm. which is A Modern Life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that is you know there's that there's that picture from the um album booklet for fine line with like mm -hmm. a bunch of post-its on a board that are like names of unreleased songs and i just like was drawn to that one i feel like harry you know with songs like sign of the times he has this like tendency or this desire i think to like make sweeping like you know all encompassing like big songs that mean a lot and i with Sign of the Times, I almost feel like it came out too early in Harry's career. Like, it's mm -hmm. such, like, a song to open your career with. It's, like, very daring, but at the same time, I'm, like, oh, such a, for such a young artist, for his first song, it's, like, such a big statement. So, in that way, it's good, but also it's, like, I don't know, maybe release this 10 years into your career? But... I know. It's, it's <laughs> funny, because it's followed right up right after with Carolina. So, you just have, yeah. and this is the state of politics in the world today, and I am very afraid. And then you just go, oh, yeah, and she's a good girl. She felt so good. And it's like, oh, this God. is very, this is what I remember being 22 was like. <laughs> I picked Carolina. Don't make me regret it. And I have both those songs, so that duality is within my set list. I love the duality. Um, but yeah, so I picked A Modern Life because I just feel like, I'm like, what does Harry have to say about A Modern Life? Like, I just want to know. I'm know. like, I'm very curious what that song could be about. It sounds like it could be one of those big, like, Sign mm. of the Times or Fine Line kind of songs where there's just, like, a lot in there. So yeah. I, I really wanted that, so I'm going to take that for my second unreleased song. Okay. So I'm going to take from my non-Wendy covers, Big Yellow Taxi. Okay, yep. That was on my list as well. Sorry, good bestie. Pick. I mean, sorry, worsty. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good cover. I love the laugh. It is. Hey, farmer, farmer. Yeah. All right. Um. So what do we have left? Um. I have one unreleased song left. I have my wild card left, and I have one One Direction song. So I will take my One Direction cover... Now, I'm tempted here to go steal my girl, mm. even though I know that people would crucify me for it, because I just love that song, as you will know from our One Direction episode. just follow your heart. I just, I know that the lyrics are, like, not great, but it's just such a fun song, and I do feel like it'd be fun live, but I don't think it'd be, like, I, it's not what I would want him to, like, cover in an actual show. Mm. So, instead, I'm gonna go with Perfect. Mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. which is on brand for me as well because it's one of my i think it's my favorite harry song from one direction which i know that you don't agree with but it is mine so i'm gonna go strong and i'm gonna go perfect all right so for my unreleased songs um i'm gonna pick Anne. um okay. i just think that that would be very sweet it would be sweet it seems like it's about his mom i'm curious like i wonder if he played it for her like you know i wonder if he was like you know, I'm not going to put it on the album, but I wonder if Anne, it's a special song just for Anne that she's heard. I feel like that's a nice idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, curious what that one would sound like as well. So that leaves one unreleased song for both of us. Yeah, and my wild card. So I think for un my last unreleased song, I'm going to go with Isabella. Okay. I, I There was like, I, I don't know if you remember this, but when these unreleased songs like first were a thing and this picture came out with, with the post-its, there was like a lot of talk about Isabella and apparently somebody involved in making the album like posted on Instagram that Isabella was really good or something. And I can't remember if I imagined that, if that was like mm -hmm. a troll and just a fan said that or like what's been happening there, but it's lived rent-free in my brain since that happened. So I just feel like that song is a good song. So that's what I'm going with. I pick... Uh, you're so American. I just feel like it seems fun. That's a really good title of the song. I feel like some of that pettiness might come out in that song. Yeah, I feel like I feel like his very like his like Britishness would come out in the song, and it, it, it's like the inverse of Taylor's like London Boy song. You know, <laughs> I mean, like I don't think to be clear, I don't think it's about Hayler. She just has like she has that literally. Literally, she just released a song called London Boy, like two years ago and it's like yep. you know i love a london boy i enjoyed whatever in, in the <laughs> afternoon and uh it's it's just um i just find that kind of really charming another of my favorite songs is by the main and it's called english girls 
and I just I always kind of love I don't know I kind of love that kind of song where somebody from one country is falling in love with somebody from you know another um mm -hmm. I just I just think it's really fun um okay and then what's your wild card is that the last pick of the draft I think so all right we're in the last pick of the draft so I have <laughs> I have like a list of songs here and they're too long and I wish I had stopped writing them down because now I have a decision to make um I I toyed with the idea of doing changes by cam um mm. I really like that song um and I think it'd be interesting to hear it and to hear that kind of country tone from him mm -hmm. I also have just like fun like I gimme 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 man oh my God. By Abba would be yeah. so much fun when you said Beach Boys I was like God if he did a God only knows cover live um i have case of you by Joni mitchell on here i'm gonna go with a case of you by Joni mitchell as my wild card okay you had Joni mitchell as one of your covers for mm -hmm. the big yellow taxi so that way we each get Joni mitchell in mm -hmm. our sets and yeah i think that makes for a good set okay so yeah so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take a second and for you it probably won't be any time at all because i will just cut the time that we take but we're gonna put our songs yeah. in order um, and then we will come back with a set list of songs for you to hear. So we will do that right now. Okay, so yeah, so we're coming back from our break that was, that should have been briefer than it was, but who knew that coming up with a set list was hard? <laughs> so I'm not completely satisfied with my final result. I should be lying and saying that I feel amazing about it and I'm going to crush you and it's great. And I do feel great about certain aspects of it, but... Yeah, so Gray, why don't you read first and go through your set list from opener to closer? And I'll give my little explanations. Yes? Yeah. Okay. I kind of decided to open up this show with Watermelon Sugar. Since he took mm -hmm. Golden, <laughs> I feel like that I needed to have that strong opener. With my number two is You Are So American as an unreleased because I felt that sounded, it just sounded fun. And then for my my um third pick i kind of decided to wind down the energy with meet me in the hallway yep i just really like you know has it has a it has a good third song vibe i think um if i had like a slightly different set maybe i would have put it later in the set but i felt like that was a good space for right now number four is girl crush i felt like that would kind of be i don't know it, it, it it's it's very different from meet me in the hallway but it still has kind of that slow vibe and then when you yep. get back to I put number five as woman. I don't know. I put woman between girl crush and Anne because I thought that that was very funny to me. It just has like oh, yeah. a similar, I don't That's know. It's cute. Yeah, it's cute. And then after Anne, I decided it's true people with kindness. That's song seven. So the, uh, the audience is very warmed up now and um, they've had the fast song and the slow song. They've had some sort of sexy songs and now it's time to get pretty gay about it. So, um, my idea for the middle of the show is during Triple with Kindness, Harry gets excited, he, you know, waves flags, and then he keeps the flags on the stage, he puts them in his little, um, he usually has like a platform that Sarah's drums are sitting on, so he puts the flags that he steals on Sarah's drum platform, he gets back up to the mic, he sings Sunflower, he, he gets cute with it, and then they slide into She. Uh, you, you can see I have detailed images in my head in this middle of that. You slide into I love She, this. they get really into it, uh, and maybe for some of She, Harry maybe even has an acoustic guitar, but then when Mitch's guitar solo comes, Harry takes off his guitar and he picks up the flags again. And wow, he, this is really specific. Yeah, he waves. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of these flag videos. <laughs> Um, he waves the flags and then he throws them back out at the audience, right? So we've got the audience super jazzed through the she guitar solo. Then the lights will come up more and we'll slide into Big Yellow Taxi. I just feel like that's kind of like jaunty, but you know, it's not it's not like super high key. Yep. And then you put from the dining table, which is kind of low key. And then What's My Pussycat is a very intense song. And I was just <laughs> like, ah, oh, fuck it. Put it here. And then I feel like we'll get a moment and Harry will joke around with the audience and stuff to get them quiet. And then we'll slide back down into, oh, it's song 13. It's almost the end. Let's slide into Night Changes. And yep. just, I feel like we'll get some real waterwork sliding into Night Changes. And then after that's, Night Changes, for the closer pre-encore, we slide right into Canyon Moon. Uh, I'm, I'm going home, I'm going home. 
and he's like, thank you, good night, and now we introduce you to the band. Uh, so everybody in the audience is obviously crying because we're all thinking, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And then, um, and then he, they start the encore and then Harry cracks his neck and, and everybody's cheering. He starts at here to take my medicine, here to take my medicine. Obviously everybody loses their fucking minds. Um, yeah, that'd be amazing. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, saying, I mean, that'd be terrible. <laughs> it'd be terrible. Okay. So then after, after he finishes medicine, he, he's just excited. Um, the lighting comes up a little bit and then he slides into Olivia. Obviously he has people who can play horns with him. Um, he, he sings like a, a great rendition of Olivia and everybody's jazz and it's super fun. And we're like, Oh my God, this is, this is great. Um, superior to what makes you beautiful in every way. And then, <laughs> <sighs> and then he finishes with Kiwi and it's great. And then he's like, goodbye, everybody. Thank you for your money. So long. <laughs> <laughs> well well i would never go to that show and never if that happened i would be like this set list it's is terrible. not good enough for me it doesn't have sign of the times on it why isn't he playing the hits <laughs> so i feel like you need some stuff on there that you don't got okay. but i gotta see that your encore is pretty rocking i know thank you okay yeah. so what is your set list all right, so here we go. I, I this was this was this was tough. This was I took too long making this up. I do not, unlike Gray, have experience making playlists like this, so it took me a little longer. Um, I also made the fatal mistake of not picking Kiwi, which I feel like <laughs> is kind of it kind of put me into a crisis. I'm curious to see if Kiwi will be his closer for like his entire career forever because it's just like the thing that he does now. It's just so good. Yeah, and I I don't know. I'm just you know. I, it, it's it's a good closer. It, I was I was searching in my set list for something to end on, and we shall see when we get there what I ended on. But you know, I I'm not I'm not so confident about it. I'm trying to think right now if I should just completely, like you know what I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make a last minute change. All right, okay. So my my concert's gonna start out. People are gonna walk in, and it's gonna be okay. golden. The classic okay. opener. You know he's going to do this as an opener. He opened, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's the first song in the album. So he did that because he knew it was going to be a good opener. And he said that. It is a good it's going to go into Lights Up. Kind of a bit of a light okay. motif going from Golden into Lights Up. And then Lights Up is kind of like, you start out with that upbeat song. Then it lights up, you slow down a little bit. And then we're going to kind of go into the more mellow section with Ever Since New York. Then that's going to go into Case of You by Joni Mitchell, first cover oh, in the set. Okay. I feel like those Ever Since New York and that song would go really well together. We're going to kind of keep this acoustic vibe going, and we're going to go into To Be So Lonely. Then we're going to go into Carolina, so we're back into the rockier, higher tempo section. In now Hawaii here I have again. A Modern right. Life, which I can't really explain why because mm -hmm. we haven't heard the song, but I feel like... <laughs> Maybe this would be a good place for one of those more existential songs. And then we're going to lead into the duology of Two Ghosts and Perfect, which okay. have a certain thing in common that I feel like makes them <laughs> nice songs to pair with each other. And then we're going to go into Isabella, which I just feel from the vibe and absolutely no evidence at all is like a higher tempo kind of a song. So that we're going to go into that. Then that's going to take us to Sledgehammer. This is going to be a dancey section of the set. Then we're going to go into Anna, which is an, another up-tempo fun song. We're going to get, go into Adore You, so there's like a lot of bangers mm -hmm. at the end of the set. And then Adore You is going to lead us back into the Fine Line album kind of zone, where we're going to end the set, this first set anyway, with Fine Line. It's going to be the closer. So I feel like I feel confident about that, feel good about that set. I feel like Fine Line's the perfect closer, literally can't do better than that. Then we're going to go into our encore. We're going to start with, this was the last minute change I made. We're going to start with what makes you beautiful. So he's going to come out. He's going to rock the audience with what makes you beautiful. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to start out there. We're going to go to the chain. So another up-tempo song. Then for a twist, we'll see how this plays with the listeners. We're going to end on final song of the concert, Sign of the Times. See, I saw him end on Sign of the Times a few times. He doesn't always end on Kiwi. He sometimes ends on Sign of the Times. Here you go, kids. Yeah. You just heard Gray confirm that I am taking cues <laughs> from the master Harry Styles himself here. So we're going to end with something that he chose himself, Sign of the Times, as the closer. Everybody's waiting for it the whole night. I have That's a question go. for you. 
So in in his live on tour concert, um, yeah. obviously he waved flags all sorts of times. He concentrated a lot of them in Only Angel in the first part of the tour. I actually haven't um, transitioned into the 2018 tour. I do think he changed some things around. Um, and so I th- I heard, I've heard that he started concentrating the waving more in Sign of the Times and What Makes You Beautiful, and what makes you beautiful which yeah. are both songs that you have. So I'm curious if you, since you're putting both Sign of the Times and What Makes You Beautiful in the encore, because I, I, obviously like, I don't have the right answer to this, would you want to mm-hmm. save that segment of the show for the encore? Do you think that he would have other songs within like the main set of songs that you could find him you could find him wanting to bring that part of the show to, you know, to change it up every night. Because obviously I had like my little story about Sunflower and, and she and, and TPWK, but I also could see yeah. other parts of my set where he could, you know, sporadically put some stuff in. Yeah. So where do you, where do you think his different parts of little quirks of the show, like where, where do you think he would do the whale and stuff? It's a good question. So treat people with kindness, you know, I, I got to say not to make your argument for you. That is the classic flag waving song I feel like that's the great flag waving song so I feel like I gotta you know another similar kind of up tempo song go with what makes you beautiful he's done it before we had that really fun moment at the Boston show where those people were dressed in rainbow and they jumped on stage and they all danced together to what makes you beautiful I feel like that could be really fun so one fun flag waving moment would be what makes you beautiful I feel like in the earlier section of the show you could maybe get some stuff maybe in lights up because that's definitely like the themes of that fit that vibe but then also that's early that's like really early early. in the concert so i'm thinking maybe i'm just gonna decide that a modern life is a really gay song and we're Mm -hmm. just gonna wave rainbow flags during a modern life i love that yes oh my god what if it's like kind of like a slow one and it's like there's different kinds of flag waving in harry styles concerts you so you could have you know, the fun one is like what makes you beautiful and then in a modern life you get like very solemn flag waving you know yeah it's true all right i'm realizing that i have a lot of songs that are people's names in my set list mm-hmm. so that's kind of an interesting quirk <laughs> all right how are you feeling to end this draft that's where we ended up we each have our set lists we each have them ordered how are you feeling about your harry styles concert that you've made i feel good about it i wish that i had a dorio and sign of the times Adore You and Sign of the Times are two king shit songs. I will say that. Uh, but I don't regret taking Canyon Moon first. I think that it... I feel like... <sighs> here, here's the thing. I feel that like... That hurts. That hurts. It cuts I deep know, still. I know. <laughs> um, I feel like he's not going to do Canyon Moon as the closer in his regular show, which is really sad to me because I feel like I would cry 7,000 tears. Yeah. Um... I would it, cry just, too. Just to hear him say, I'll be gone too long from you. I I wouldn't be able to handle that. I don't know what I'd be. I don't know what I'd, I'd do. So, but I don't think that that's going to happen. But it could. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe quarantine has scrambled his brains a little bit. And... <laughs> I'm pulling for it. I'm pulling for Canyon Moon to be in the set so hard. Yeah, Harry, Harry be insane. Hear us Come now. On. Put it in the set. Come I don't on. have it in my set. And even though I think my set is amazing and I would love to go to this concert, I'm, I'm pulling for it. I'm pulling for Canyon Moot to be in the set. Come on, bestie. Okay, so listeners, uh, in a few days you can vote on who had the best set. This was really fun for us to play. Yeah, it was a really good time. Yeah, I hope that it was fun for you guys to listen to. Key, did, did you learn anything about yourself from playing this game with me? Did you learn anything about me? That's I learned you? that I shouldn't have trash talked you and said that i was super competitive because i don't know i feel like maybe you wouldn't have wouldn't have snatched canyon moon out of my arms like that but maybe you still would have so let, let's just say you picked canyon moon first harry karma is a force in the world and oh. it just might come and get you because you made that decision wow <laughs> oh my god um but yes, I I really liked doing this too. I I think it was really fun. I really liked the draft as an idea. So if you guys have any of the ideas for like Harry related drafts we could do, the, the one idea that I'd kind of thought of that we could do was like outfits so we could do different categories mm-hmm. of like tour outfits and, and performance looks and stuff like that. But if you have another idea for like a Harry related thing we could do, I'd love to hear it and then, and then maybe we can do that in a future episode. Yeah, we're really open to a lot of things. Like the one that Key originally pitched for this was 
outfits. And then I was walking home um, drunk from a outside <laughs> showing of Casablanca, and I texted Key. I was like, "No, we should do fine line sets." I didn't even really know what a draft was. I just seemed it just seemed like we were competing in something, and um, I wanted to, I I wanted to have some input. So uh, the entire of everything is Key's idea, except for the the uh, set, which is my idea. Um, and the concept, which I stole, thank you to the Big Picture Podcast from The Rigger, which is where this is from. But yeah, I, I think, yeah, we had a really good time. I had a good time drafting the set list. I did learn about myself that I chose Carolina, I guess. So that's something <laughs> I learned about myself. <laughs> um, And yeah, had a good time. Yeah. Tell us what you thought about it. I'm, I'm sure we'd be curious to hear it. We definitely want your suggestions for any song, any ones that we could do in the future. And let us know if you make your, if you do this with anybody, I don't know, if you have like a hairy friend you want to do this with, make set, make, um, make ones, alternate, make your sets and send us your sets. I'd, I'm curious to see what your first picks would be. Tell us, you could let us know what your first picks would be, like all that stuff. If we made a colossal strategy mistake, um, all of that stuff, you could let us know. All right. So uh, I think we're going to take, is out of here. I know that we typically have um, a section called Must Get Rid of Toxic and Community here. We're currently evaluating uh, whether or not we want to keep the section, mostly because uh, there's just a lot of negativity on the internet and I'm not 100% sure if we are taking away from it or contributing to it and I, I don't know if it's very healthy for me to look at it. So. Uh, I mean, you guys can let us know what you think about whether or not uh, you, you approve that decision, but that's why it's not here tonight. So we're going to instead just kind of transition into talking about what's going on with us in non-Harry life. So are you looking forward to anything? Do you have any recommendations, Key? Yeah, so like I talked about in the last episode, I've kind of been in an MCU kick against my own better judgment, so I've been doing a rewatch. So from that rewatch, uh, my three... MCU faves up in at this moment in the rewatch I'm I have a few movies left but I'm almost done um so you know my I I don't know if I'd say you can watch these without having seen the others but who who am I kidding most of you have seen enough to know so Black Panther Thor Ragnarok and Captain America the Winter Soldier are definitely my top three Marvel ventures I guess probably solo movies but so I, I I've had a fun time rewatching those I just really like all three of those movies and I just thought I'd say that here because the MCU rewatch has been taking up a lot of my nights and then just movies generally I was catching up on some of the Oscar movies I did watch Nomadland and I I, I thought it was really good so of course you, it doesn't need my endorsement it just won best picture but <laughs> if you need one more person to tell you to watch it and just be that one person that push, pushes you over the edge it's on Hulu um, um, so if you have that service, you can watch it. And yeah, recently I also watched The Talented Mr. Ripley, which Gray and I talked yes, about at length, we which both, is a really good we movie. We both recently watched The Talented Mr. Ripley, and Key thinks that I'm a serial killer now. <laughs> I really don't, but now that you chose Canyon Moon out at the front of this show for me, I, I feel like maybe, maybe, maybe you're back in the, I, I'm worried about you zone because... That was harsh. That was harsh. That was it cool. Was, it was harsh. Yeah, but so that, the, all those movies, and then I'd say, you know, th this podcast I've been talking about, The Big Picture, which is like a movie and movie news, movie criticism podcast on the Ringer Podcast Network. I really enjoy that podcast, and um, yeah, just, just in the in the run-up to the Oscars, I've been listening to a lot of those episodes, so if you're looking for movie coverage, uh, that's a good podcast to check out as well. So yeah, those are my non hairy related recommendations. What about you? So yesterday, I went out with my my best friend and we went to have dinner and a movie for the first time in over a year and it was wonderful wow. so we went to go see an outside showing of uh, Casablanca which I'd only seen in passing like half watching a few years ago and which is like a much gayer movie than one would think uh, I don't know have you seen it Key? Yeah, I actually have plugged it as my recommendation at the end of this podcast before, but I don't remember it being a gay movie, so well, please the, elaborate. Well, at the end, so the one officer guy, he's always going off about how the main character, how, how they equally have, like, no scruples, and there's all, there's just so much, like, for Captain, I think Captain Renault, his name, there's so many comments about how he's just, like, up for anything, and then there's, like, the main character, he notes, he says, 
you've never loved a woman before. Like, there's so much, like, bisexual energy, you know? Like, there's just... I don't know if we want the bisexual representation of the policeman that is having sex with women and blackmailing them. Listen... I, I, I don't know if that's... <laughs> The I don't know if that's the bisexual representation we want. That's not the vibe I got. I didn't <laughs> interpret those lines that way, but I guess I, I, I can't I can't step on your interpretation. Wow. Well, I didn't say he was the only bisexual in the movie. I said that the main character is also bisexual. Well, that is a fan fiction that I would read. Yeah, and they they not with Captain Renault. Let me clarify. They say this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship at the end of the movie. One of the most iconic lines of all time. Yeah, and that, it's a very gay line of them. So I'm just, I'm just saying, sometimes bisexuals are bad people too. <laughs> you know, uh, so wow. open your mind. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I I will say my experience of watching Casablanca was largely me watching it and being like that's what this line is from like every fifth line mm -hmm. in casablanca is like one of the most iconic film lines of all time mm -hmm. and i i was just shocked by that like i knew that certain lines were from it but then you watch and it's like I, it, it's so iconic as to have mm -hmm. been parodied so much that like people don't even know where it's from and then you watch that movie and it's like oh it's my god here. like this movie has like 50 lines that are like some of the top movie lines of all time so yeah great movie uh, yeah i just i thought it was great I, I was very emotional at the end yeah it was just a really good movie and i always try to look out for like who might be gay in a movie that's that's <laughs> one of my tasks when i watch any movie is figure it's very important to know which person in a movie might be gay and yeah other than that my life has just been swallowed by these pride flag videos, man. I just spent so much time doing that, and I will continue to, most likely. Yeah, this this weekend, um, we wanted to get in recording this on a Thursday because I'm seeing my family for the first time in over a year this weekend, so we're making all sorts of milestones. So I'm really excited for that, too. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, uh, so Key, do you want to take us out of here? Yeah, so you can contact us at WeBlameHarryStyles at gmail.com. On Twitter and Tumblr, we can be found at HarryStylesPod. You can follow us there, DM us there if you have any suggestions or yeah, anything you want to say. Uh, let us know what you think of the show. So one way you could do that is also by rating and reviewing our podcast and Apple Podcasts. We'd so appreciate it if you took a second and you gave us a rating if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to us on your preferred podcast host to become notified of our next episode. Thank you for listening. We love you. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, everyone.